jeepers you're listening to smash or pass hello everybody welcome back to another interview on the jbn melee channel i am jb and of course with me is melee hi we have dan farrell hi and joining us as the special guest who will be interviewing today is mr daniel ross thank you so much for joining well hello everybody thank you so much for having me or i should say Oh my god, that is absolutely amazing. Like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get into all of that because your career has been absolutely incredible and we can tell that it's going to continue to be incredible. So to get into all that is going to be absolutely amazing today. But I suppose what a better place to start than the start? I mean, I appreciate going on to IMDb isn't always the exact metric, but around about that time, you know, it appears that your career started in the early 2000s. But before that point, what made you want to go into acting in general? Well, first of all, thank you all so much for having me. It's a joy to speak with you today. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, what can I say? I've enjoyed the performing arts uh, ever since I was a little kid, you know, getting in front of uh, family and friends and uh, making a lot of nonsense and being silly. Uh, that was always uh, exciting for me. And so when I realized there was a medium that I could do that, like professionally, I said, well, I think this is where I'm going to be going. So, uh, yeah, I just started studying the performing arts, Shakespeare, theater, musical theater. And uh, my heart really was invested in movies uh, and TV. So that kind of lit the spark inside of me. And uh, I just started going down that journey uh, around the time I, uh, I think I graduated from high school uh, in college, just going for it. <laughs> That's amazing. And you said there that your heart's, you know, with movies and shows. Was there ever any in particular that you remember really inspiring you or any actors that you particularly enjoyed seeing? Oh, absolutely. I mean, as far as actors go, uh, I mean, it runs the full gamut. But I would say Robin Williams, of course, is is very close and dear to mind. Uh, Gene Wilder. Some movies that were incredible for me were uh, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen. Uh, or Munchausen, sometimes I, I pronounce that incorrectly. It's a funny word. Uh, what else? Um, the original Willy Wonka with the aforementioned Gene Wilder. Um, things that really were just about pure imagination. Uh, those things really um, stirred the pot, so to speak. So those were probably those would probably be my my two big ones right there. And then my first movie that I ever saw. I don't know if you can see behind me. I have a very large Transformers collection. The Transformers, the movie, 1986, was the first movie I ever saw in theaters, and uh, game over. <laughs> uh, no, those are some great inspirations. And I suppose um, a lot of our audience are people who want to go into acting and voiceover. Is there any advice that you would give to anyone who wants to follow in your career path? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I would say, you know, study uh, acting, the fundamentals of acting, uh, like scene studies, character breakdowns, uh, practice improvisation, um, and, uh, you know, understand what your instrument is capable of if voice acting is what you're interested in. Um, but it really has to be a passion. It needs to be something that you want to do because I, I, I hear the, the phrase, you know, if you can do anything else, do it. Don't be in the entertainment entertainment business. Uh, but if it's something that you absolutely can't live without, then go for it and follow it with every fiber of your being. Uh, that's kind of what I did. And you have to remember, everybody's journey is going to be a little bit different. Um, you know, you may want to be like, I, I, I want to follow the career of this celebrity or I want to do exactly this or exactly that. I had no idea that my career path would be uh, jump started in voice acting. Uh, when I was a kid, I actually didn't like my voice. I did lots of impressions, impersonations, got into lots of trouble, fake, you know, prank phone calls and the such. Um, but I didn't get cast in the on-camera or theater roles that I wanted because I had a quirky voice. And so, uh, yeah, it was just later in life that I realized, wait, that's actually my superpower and I should be using it for good. <laughs> Oh, so that's a really great lesson in really embracing what makes you special and just what makes you stand out. I think that that's such an amazing lesson that everyone watching can, you know, can take from. But, you know, apart from that as well, like given the fact that you've had experience both doing on camera work and also, you know, voiceover work, is there any like differences or like nuanced differences in preparing for a role that you're going to be doing on camera versus a voiceover role? 
100%. 100%. So when you're on camera, you, you have your entire physicality to be mindful of, your facial expressions. What am I doing with my hands? Uh, along with all of the, you know, intention that goes into uh, creating a character. When you're doing voice acting, this is all you have. And so you have to approximate what hand gestures sound like, what facial expressions sound like. Uh, you almost have to go through the motions of, like, as an artist, like, illustrating the scene that people are seeing and hearing and digesting in their brain. So there's a whole other level to it, uh, almost like a puzzle that I really enjoy uh, uh, solving and participating with. So very different medium, and I love both uh, equally. So that's fantastic. What a great story, you know, from going from not liking your voice initially to becoming the incumbent voice of Donald Duck, who is like is up there and easily the top five, I want to be as bold as to say, most iconic characters of all of like animation, of cartoon history is absolutely incredible. But how did, you know, you voicing Donald Duck come about? Oh, you're telling me, man. I, I, I would say arguably the most recognizable character voice of all time. Um, but uh, for me, it started... <laughs> My, with my mom. My mom uh, taught me the voice when I was three years old, and she would do it herself. And so I often like to say that that was our love language and how we would communicate with each other uh, throughout life, no matter what was going on, good times or bad, we could always quack each other up. And so, um, yeah, that was something really special between the two of us. But it was just a it was a people trick. It was something I would use at parties and events to, you know, make people smile, make people laugh. It was never anything, you know, serious. It was just something that I did. And so when I moved to Los Angeles in 2014, um, I got myself an agent and out of the blue, as luck would have had it, uh, Disney was auditioning. Uh, for uh, Donald Duck and Mickey and the Roadster Racers. And my agent calls and she says, uh, you do the Donald voice, right? And I went, what? And she said, okay, well, we got an audition for you. And I'm like, no way. Really? Okay. Well, little old me's not going to get it, but I'll try. And, uh, you know, it. I think it was like a month after the audition, I got a call back and I had to go to Disney to do that with everybody. And I'm waiting there with celebrities in the room and people that I admired. And I'm like, why am I here? <laughs> and uh, it was a whole process. And we did it again. And then we did it again. And we did it again and again and again. And then they said, OK, well, you've got the role. And I went, <laughs> and my life completely changed. Uh, it's just been the joy of a lifetime to uh, be a steward of such an amazing and fun character, and I will forever be grateful for it. That's an incredible story, and such an you know just so good to hear. And we normally like to ask around this stage how familiar you were with you were with the character before you voiced it, but I think you've answered that yourself. I don't think you could have been much more familiar with the character. Well, I'll tell you this: uh, when it became more than just an impression you know, to, to, to make people laugh. I had to be in front of a microphone, which hears all the, all the sounds in your mouth and your stomach and your throat and everything else. I had to perfect it. And that really took some effort. I, I took weeks watching the back catalog, you know, 80 plus years of content of Donald Duck, listening to Clarence, Ducky Nash, Tony Anselmo, uh, doing that voice. Because I wanted to, I wanted there to be connective tissue. I wanted it to not just be, "Hey, you hear me doing this voice." I want you to hear the character that you so love and expect. Now, the producers of my show requested that I slightly pitch him up mm -hmm. and uh, make him clear, uh, uh, clearer to understand, so more enunciation, which is not really what the character is all about. Uh, you know, the whole shtick is, what do you say? What do you say? <laughs> so for me, it was. <laughs> so I wanted it to be as close as possible. Uh, but obviously, my version is slightly different than Clarence Ducky Nash's. And when you're in the booth, you know, you are in charge of what sounds are being imbued into the character. So I, I often use the example, the difference between Donald's laugh, which is a belly laugh, and his chuckle. 
very different sounds, very different mechanisms of how that's done. And so I really took it upon myself to uh, ensure that I knew exactly what I was doing when I got into that booth. And uh, uh, the, the results will speak for themselves. <laughs> I mean, you said it yourself. It certainly is one of the most recognized cartoon voices. And I think you are the third official voice. So I know you said you went back and took a look at how, you know, the first two had been and tried to, you know, like you say, keep it as close to as everybody would recognize and expect. But like you say, increase the pitch a little bit. Was there anything else that you wanted to bring to your character and, you know, kind of adapt it to being your own as well as keeping it very true to what people will expect? That's a wonderful question. I think, uh, you know, every time you tackle a character, when, when an actor is placed in a role, you want to bring your A game. You want to to do what people expect of you. And you want to bring something new to the table to kind of put your stamp on it. And for me, I just wanted to bring the love and the passion and the joy that that character has brought to me my entire life. Um, story of how Mama Duck, my mom, you know, taught me that voice. I wanted that to be a huge part of, of what I was bringing to the table. And so when I get to meet fans and I get to see them in person, uh, that's the connection that we make. And so many people come to me and say, my grandfather, my dad, my uncle used to do that voice for me and it made me smile and it's so special. And because my mom did that for me, we, we have that connection. And I just think it's amazing that one character uh, like Donald uh, can do that for so many people and, and stir the pot and make that that emotional well of, of awesomeness uh, overflow. Yeah, it's great to hear you talk about um, voicing an iconic character because I know in the game Multiverses, you voiced, you know, characters such as Gizmo, Stripe, Uncle Shagworthy. Um, how did you work on that game come about? Oh, my goodness. Well, I auditioned for it. Um, it was just something that my agency sent along my way. And I went, oh, my gosh, Gizmo, Stripe, Uncle Shag. You know, that was that was exciting for me. The first one that I auditioned for was Uncle Shagworthy. <clears throat> and, you know, for like a long time, I've done Shaggy. You know, Shaggy's one of those voices I really enjoy. And so I, I, I was like, OK, well, let me see how this could translate. And they wanted a stuffy British gentleman. You know, who's who's a, a, a who's he? he's into jewelry. He has a castle, castle shagworthy and all this other stuff. So I'm thinking, you know, stuffy British gentleman, blah, 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 blah. you know, maybe some Harry Potter, you know, a little bit of uh, Ian McKellen, Gandalf or whatever. And and I noticed in the script, they kept saying like, like this, like that, like this. And, and that to me was, again, the connective tissue. Uh, between him and Shaggy, because like Shaggy always says, like Scoob. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe may, let me let me have him sound similar. Like Uncle Shagworthy at your service. And I was like, oh, there it is. There's the character. And so I went with that and uh, they they enjoyed it. And we booked it. And um, not long after we auditioned for Gizmo and for Stripe. And uh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Stripe, yam, yam. I mean, those characters are iconic. And uh, not to say Uncle Shagworthy isn't, originally voiced <laughs> by Casey Kasem in one episode of Scooby-Doo. Uh, but, you know, Gizmo and Stripe, I, I watched Gremlins when I was a kid. Gremlins 2 and all of those. So um, just like Donald Duck, uh, these are what we call legacy characters. Characters that are kind of passed from one person to the other. And uh, Howie Mandel did the original voice of uh, uh, Gizmo, Frank Welker, uh, and a couple others did uh, Stripe. And so I took it upon myself to do as much research as I possibly could. And one of the things that I really enjoy about the roles that I get into is sometimes with these legacy characters, you hit a wall in terms of what you can reference. There were only two movies and a couple video games, you know, with Gizmo. And, and so it was like, what do they sound like when they're in a fighting game and they're they're throwing punches and kicks and all these sudden, you know, death gnolls and, and dying and stuff. What does that sound like? And so uh, at a certain point, you just kind of have to approximate and use your, your talents to uh, figure it out. And I just thought that was so much fun. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely incredible. I love that so much because it is just its own 
its own universe almost like they're all characters that can come together and coexist and i think that that's absolutely wonderful and what surprised me the most i don't know if it is should but you like you know you can probably tell by the background that we absolutely love scooby-doo and the fact that you could go oh and it was under yeah, Segway, I like, can try you over there Oh my god! So you're like all the mystery and gang in one. That's that's absolutely amazing. So I guess it may be a redundant question, but I'll I'll ask it anyway just to see if there's any if there's anything else that I can glean from it. But how familiar were you with the Scooby Doo franchise, or you know, is there perhaps another Scooby Doo character that isn't in multiverses presently that you'd love to bring life to? Oh my goodness! Um, well, I mean, here's the thing: when I was a kid sitting in front of the TV for Saturday morning cartoons with a big bowl of cereal. Like that's, that's my special place, my well that I go back to. Uh, and so anything that I watched when I was a kid is on my bucket list of things to be a part of. And so when I got to cross off Scooby-Doo, that was incredible with, with uncle Shagworthy just to, you know, just to kind of touch that franchise and say, okay, I've been a small part of that. That's amazing. Uh, I did that with Tom and Jerry when I worked on the Tom and Jerry show for several years. And so the only one I haven't uh, been a part of yet is Looney Tunes. That's that's a big one on my bucket list. I hope to crack that at some point. But yeah, I, I love the Scooby-Doo characters. I used to watch them all the time. I used to watch a pup named Scooby-Doo, um, you know, and uh, oh gosh, uh, Scooby-Doo! Um, Scooby-Doo! Oh my gosh, those were so much fun. So yeah, I've, I've been a lifelong Scooby-Doo fan. They are some amazing voices. Sorry, that was just so fun to hear that I forgot I was meant to be speaking after that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in the game... Oh, I know I'm doing my job. <laughs> just captivated like i'm actually sat watching the show and like that was an amazing voice so um when you were recording the lines and there certainly were some really interesting lines of dialogue for the game especially when you're fighting shaggy um when you were recording those lines did you know at the time that it would be matthew lillard that was voicing shaggy no i didn't actually i had a feeling that it would be um, just based on what I had heard from the game and that they were using the most current actors, you know, for the characters, uh, like uh, the, the the actress who plays Arya in Game of Thrones. I, I knew that she was going to be a part of it at the time. Uh, so I, I don't even remember how I knew that information. Maybe there was like some kind of release or news blurb or something. But uh, I had a feeling that maybe it would be because, you know, who else who else is uh, is Shaggy at this point? I, I think there is another actor. I'm forgetting his name who has done Shaggy uh, and Scooby before, but I, I don't recall off the top of my head. Yeah, there's a Scott Innes who sometimes does like the video that, games and stuff like that. You know but... <laughs> this is how I know you are the super fan and I'm just a plea. <laughs> Oh, no, no. no oh, honestly I mean like we said I, I'm still amazed by the voices I can't wait to go back and listen to them you'd think that you'd voice the gang yourself but in terms <laughs> of the people that you kind of worked alongside with on this game I know like you said there was a few people that came back to voice the characters that they were did you work alongside anybody in a studio for this game was it that you all recorded separately yeah uh, we generally these days we record individually so there aren't many group records, uh, let alone for video games. Rarely, I, I don't even think that happens in video games, to be quite honest. Um, yeah, it was all recorded solo. So I, I didn't get to interact with any of the other voice actors or really even know what the finished product was going to look like. Um, but, you know, Multiverses came out last year in beta and it even won Best Fighting Game of the Year. And it's coming back uh, in just a couple weeks, May 28th. Uh, and I'm so excited for uh, everyone to see it and to see what uh, Player First Games has been cooking up. It's incredible. We'll definitely be sure to like you know advertise that because it's just so much fun. Like all that whole universe is amazing, and just like being able to dip your toe so well into the Scooby Doo universe is amazing, and it's such an amazing connection as well. Because you, with you also playing Gizmo and Stripe, there's also like rumblings of a Scooby Doo and Gremlins crossover at some point. So would that be a project that would appeal to you in appearing at all? I mean, uh, if it's a steady paycheck, yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, from a fan perspective, heck yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see Gizmo and, and Scooby going on some uh, some mysteries, <laughs> solving some cases together. 
I think that would be amazing. Because that first one, like, the rumor came out, I was like, how can that work? And then just re-watching that first Gremlins, the interactions that Gizmo has with the family dog, I'm like, you can just switch that out with Scooby and you've got a really <laughs> good time on your hands, so... Right, oh. Gizmo, be quiet. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. And I guess, um, you know, to get into the stage of, of wrapping things up ever so slightly, um, if there was a character that you are a fan of or have been a fan of for a while that isn't in the Multiverses universe, obviously that's quite Warner Brothers centric. But if you could just pick from any fandom in the whole world for you to bring life to that isn't in Multiverses at the moment, do you have like one or maybe a handful that you'd really like to have a crack at? Oh my goodness. I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> where do I even begin? Um, gee, I mean, Tom and Jerry are already in there. Um, gosh, I, I would say Transformers. Uh, I'd love to reprise Starscream uh, from 2007. Starscream, leader of the Decepticons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be so much fun, uh, have him in a fighting game like that uh, and mixing it up with all these different characters. Um, gosh, who else would I love in there? Uh, you know, I have to say, it's a weird choice, but I mentioned him already. Uh, Baron von Munchausen. That would be a very interesting choice and out of left field that I don't think anybody would uh, uh, really recognize. Uh, and I think it would be lots of fun. Oh yeah, I think it would be too. That's amazing. I was kind of fishing a little bit because of the Sunnydale t-shirt, and also I've known you uh, yes. post some Doctor Who stuff on Instagram, <laughs> and I'm like, <gasps> yeah. I, yeah. As I UK am a people, fan. I'm a Hoobian. I like Battlestar Galactica, Star Wars, Star Trek, all of that. Uh, bona fide geek, right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh well, you're definitely a man of taste. Um. And just in terms of your own career, um, are you working on any upcoming projects that you can talk about at all? Sure, sure. There's one that I can talk about right now. Uh, uh, there's a video game coming out from a old movie called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Uh, I play uh, a couple fun voiceover roles in that. So I've been told I can talk about that. Uh, other than that, there's really not much I can say at the present moment, uh, but there's lots of things uh, on, on the back burner. So, so look, look for things coming either later this year, 2025, in the future, who knows? Um, so th things in the, in the can coming out. Uh, maybe Grimace will be coming back this year for another Grimace Shake uh, uh, marathon. I don't know. I haven't been called yet. I'm hoping to get that call. If you're watching McDonald's, I'm available. Uh, boo -boo 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 -boo. So, uh, yeah, that's that's really all that is going on right now. Killer Clowns from Outer Space and Multiverses coming out May 28th. Oh, well, we definitely look forward to that. And then where is the best place for people watching to keep up with your work? Oh, thank you for that question. Uh, I can be found across social media at actor Daniel Ross. Actor Daniel Ross. Uh, my website is actor Daniel Ross. My handle on social media is actor Daniel Ross. I've made it so easy for you. I've got a lot of followers on TikTok. I'd love for you to follow me on Instagram. Uh, stay in tune with the shenanigans. And of course, any announcements that I have. And uh, if you're interested in learning about voice acting, I do offer private coaching. Uh, which you can book time with me through my website, actordanielross.com. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. We'll definitely be sure to leave all that linked in the description as well. And obviously following ourselves, what we're really hoping for, this is always a selfish thing like to throw in, but a UK-based Comic-Con appearance, that would be amazing because we'd be like right there. You know what? It, here's the thing. I'm open to it. My, my passport is ready to go. Uh, I just need to be invited. So if you have a local convention that you really want me to appear at, let them know. Take to social media, tag the convention, uh, tag me, tag uh, my agency, CelebWorks. Here, hold on. Nope, that's not it. Hold on. I have this here ready to go in case anybody wants. Here we go. CelebWorks with an X. So you can tag them, tag the convention, tag me, and just say, please bring Daniel Ross. Or if you know promoters, say, please bring him. We would like to see him. That's how it works. <laughs> oh, that is absolutely incredible. And of course, that does conclude all of the questions that we had for you today. Just thank you so, oh so goodness. much for coming on. Like, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you. Oh, well, what about my questions? Oh, gosh. I mean, um, <laughs> uh, we'd be, we'd be yeah, open to that. Let me, let me check my, my number one question is, 
Uh, what are your other questions? <gasps> questions. <laughs> okay, no, I do have one. How about what is the craziest item that a fan has ever brought to you at a convention to sign? Bonus question. Uh, a human child. Oh, a human <laughs> child. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 didn't happen, obviously. Uh, but it was presented, and I went, um, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> that okay, that we've had some strange answers to that question before, and I, I, I think uh, that might have just topped it. About a tattoo, they were like, "I want to have a tattoo of your autograph, like on my leg or something." So I've I've done stuff like that before. Um, but as far as like other strange things. No, I, I I can't say that there have there been anything super crazy. <laughs> oh, I mean that's absolutely incredible. This has been an absolutely amazing time. Um, I'm sure we could speak to you for hours at some other stage. But thank you so much for coming on, and thank you to everyone so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure to have everyone here. If you do want to see more, then please like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>